I'm thinking about will, not specifically free will, although that kind of comes into it. But I'm trying to take kind of one step back from free will and look at the, for myself, at the underpinnings for the idea really. And here I'm thinking, uh, well, I'm just thinking about the, the mental models that we're using because my take on all this stuff is really from the position of cognitive linguistics, you know, cognitive poetics, embodied cognition, those kind of ideas, which basically say that, you know, the mind is a series of kludges put together by evolution, and one of its primary mechanisms that allows it to engage in, in abstract thought is uh, using techniques which we might think of as metaphors and figurative operations. Um, and that's revealed in the language we use. So, you know, picking up on Steven Pinker's phrase about language as a window into human nature, we can understand a little bit about how the brain is doing its job by looking at the smoke signals that come out of our mouths when we try to, exp to uh, cloak that thought in words. Uh, and, you know, and that tends to be a lot of kind of figuration going on in there, figurative language like metaphors and metonymy and synecdoche and that kind of stuff, revealing a similar kind of figuration at the level of um, brain activation patterns. Um, so why am I going with that? Oh yes, a will. So I'm just trying to apply that kind of logic to the idea of will as it ap appears in, t in phrases like free will and in willpower. Willpower, because that's an interesting phrase. Because I think one of the ways in which we understand will is through, as I say, through metaphor and figurative language. And I would say that probably the primary uh, metaphor for will is as a kind of substance. I know we don't consciously think that, but a lot of the way we talk about will is as if it's a substance. And it kind of appears as, as almost as a substance in some, uh, well, not, um, not current, but certainly some uh, older forms of thinking. Uh, I guess I'm thinking in, in, in literary terms of the Vril energy as it, as it appears in Bulwer Lytton's writings or the, um, the idea of... Um, well, actually it's a little bit like the idea of Qi, isn't it, in, in, uh, you know, in, in Tai Chi and Qigong and those kind of practices, Chinese traditional medicine practices. It's some kind of energetic principle informing uh, Powering human activity. Should we go in here, boys? Come on. Baby, come on. Baby. Just trying to get out of the wind. Uh, step over the bar, my So, yeah, this idea of the will do it in, in, in those kind of things, I think. And um, specifically, you get it, well, you know, obviously one of my things is um, theatre and actor training. And you get this, the idea of the will comes in there in terms of things like impulse energy. Impulse energy, which is a, a phrase from uh, Michael Chekhov, theatre director and theatre maker. Uh, you know, that the actor is in a, in a stage role and by extension, you know, the actors that we all are in our day-to-day -day lives is driven to do the next um, action driven to say the next line, driven to move to the next plotted place on the stage by, by the impulse energy rising in him, is kind of how it works. And you find it in people like Stanislavski who talk about it in terms of uh, aims and intentions and objectives. But it's, a still, it's the same kind of metaphor that's being played out, as if there's this substance inside us. I think it also overlaps with uh, kind of Freudian ideas to do with the libidinous energy, libido. A lot of the language of that is that there's this kind of substance inside us, almost like the fuel for the Freudian steam engine, you know, in which the superego is the governor and the aid is the boiler or the, I don't know, well, that, you, you can kind of, that, that kind of works hydrodynamically as well. And in that there's this energy, the libido energy, which uh, which powers the system, and that has this quality, like a substance, which is has correlations, I think, with the idea of will and the power of the will, the power that comes from the will, or something like that. Where else do you find it? I guess you find it in Bergson. He talks about 
what is he talking about? The élan vital, the vital élan, um, which again is this kind of energetic principle, but the language makes it sound very much like a substance, usually kind of liquid, almost like a volatile liquid. You find it in ideas of ectoplasm. It's, it's hovering very closely towards the idea of a semi-material soul when you get to ectoplasm. It's this kind of substance which um, we think of as powering life. Uh, yeah, there's probably more. I know there's some fantastic ones in Egyptian mythology because they break it down to about five different components, all of which have slightly substantive qualities and slightly different substantive qualities. And in things like the old humours, you know, in medieval um, medicine and, um, and philosophy, you had the idea of the humours, didn't you? These substances like black bile and yellow bile or whatever it's called and uh, and these things that flow through you and again act as a kind of fuel for life and and kind of hold this hold uh, yeah hold life within themselves I don't know it seems to me when we're talking about will we're also leaning against that set of metaphors yeah. Yeah, I think you also find it a little bit, and this is probably a bit too much, uh, in um, kind of naive understandings of, uh, of, of some physics, and which is instantiated again in medieval physics, you know what I mean? Like the ideas of, of, of uh, impetus, old ideas of impetus, you know, you throw an arrow, you fire an arrow in the air, and it keeps going in a straight line according to old uh, models of ballistics. It keeps going in a straight line until it runs out of impetus, as if impetus is in the arrow, like a fuel. And when it gets to the, the acme, the high point of that, the impetus runs out and then it falls to the ground. In fact, all model, all drawings in ballistics manuals showing the flight of arrows or the flight of cannonballs would show them going in a straight line and then arcing down towards the ground, which is not how they fly at all. They fly in a parabola, but, that's, but it was assumed at a certain point that because they were, they'd been given some impetus, this almost like this substance had been injected into them, like a fuel, that they would just be propelled by the impetus until the impetus ran out, and then they would, as I say, fall to the ground. And we still think of that, you know. We still talk about when rolling stuff along the ground. We still talk about it rolling until it runs out of energy, as if the energy is in it. And of course, that's not that's happening at all. Uh, and again, I think when we're talking about will and willpower, there's this sense within it of this substance. It's not really there, you know, it's a mythical, metaphorical substance that we've concocted with our brains, <laughs> with our minds that are, I think are, these, are, are working in this fairly clunky, kludgy way, uh, trying to explain the movements of... Uh, this complexity based on a very relatively simple model and so it concocts our mind, concoct ideas like impetus, like the frill energy or chi energy as, as our um, ectoplasm as substances as kind of placeholders or stand-ins or understandable versions of things which without those things would not be understandable yeah, and will is one of those. Brings a lot of baggage with it, but I think will is one of those. Well, that makes some kind of sense.